Hi, thank you all for coming today. And I just wanted to point out, I'm one of the few CEOs you're going to see with a condom bag, a uterus necklace, and a beaver ring. So go Bears. So I'm here today with the moonshot idea of making periods optional. Imagine all of you with uteri and those of you that are allies with those of us with uteri. If women only had six to 16 periods in their lives, how amazing would that be? I came across this idea in 2006 when I was trying to get pregnant. I had been on the birth control pill for ages, and my periods had been very, very, very light. When you're on the birth control pill patching, it's very, very, very light. But when you're trying to get pregnant, you have to build that lining so it can catch that embryo. And when it doesn't catch that embryo, it bleeds. And I was like, oh my gosh, there is so much blood. How do women deal with this every single month? So envision every single month, everybody with a uterus building and sloughing and building and sloughing and building and sloughing. Every time you build that lining, you risk uncontrolled growth, cancer. Every time you pop out an egg, you risk ovarian cancer. And we don't know if that is due to the popping or the healing, but it has been shown that if everyone turned off that popping for five years, we would decrease the incidence of ovarian cancer by 50%. And then <laughs> at the bottom, you see the result of the periods. Inevitably, you will ruin some underwear, some clothes, some sheets. A world with fewer periods would be a better one. And I thought I came up with this idea in 2006. However, Dr. Coutinho beat me to it in 1999. And there's a great book called Is Menstruation Obsolete? And it details all the scientific essays, not essays, but papers, um, peer-reviewed and evidence-based. So if you want to read up on it, you can read up on it there. However, my favorite, um, one of my favorite authors out there, Malcolm Gladwell, also wrote an article called John Rock's Error, where he discusses the origin of the birth control pill. And I, as a startup founder, I absolutely get startup world. There were three founders. One of them was Dr. John Rock, and he was a devout Catholic. Not a once a week Catholic, but an every single day Catholic. <laughs> and he wanted to get the pill through the Catholic Church. How amazing would that have been if he had gotten it done? He got it through the nuns. The nuns are always cool. He got it through the priests, much harder to do. Then he got to the Pope, the Pope figured it out. And unfortunately, Dr. John Rock died a sad Catholic because he had really hoped to get it through the Pope. And the two PhDs, however, we're like, why are you making women bleed every month? It could be every three months, every six months. It could be never. And had there been a woman on the team, I'm pretty sure it would have been never. Or if I'd been on the team, definitely never. But um, unfortunately, Dr. Uh, John Rock won that argument. And ever since the beginning of the birth control pill and subsequently the patch and the ring, all of those methods have had one week off just because of Dr. John Rock. And people may say, well, it's not natural not to have your periods. However, in this amazing article by Malcolm Gladwell, he covers the Dogon tribe. Dr. Beverly Strassman goes to study the Dogon tribe in Africa. And this wasn't like ages ago. This is like now. And the Dogon tribe banishes their women, unfortunately, to menstruation huts, as you see here, every single time they bleed. She studied for 736 nights women being banished to the menstruation hut. And these women have the same lifetime as we do. They don't die at age 30, they die at age 70, so we're comparing apples to apples, not apples to oranges. And what she found on the left, the Dogon tribe has menarche when you start your period at age 16. The United States, we start our periods at age 12. This is about nutrition. Once we hit 100 pounds, you generally get your period, and we have lots of nutrition in this country. And then they have seven periods a year. Again, a nutritional thing. We have 13 periods a year. They have eight or nine children. We have two. I'm not advocating for eight or nine children. <laughs> but um, they're, they're pregnant a lot. And then they're breastfeeding for 12 months exclusively. We only breastfeed for zero, three, or six months. 
they have 110 periods in their lives. We have 350 to 400 periods in our lives. They have no ovarian or endometrial cancer. We have ovarian and endometrial cancer. So as my UCSF medical professor told me, ob the natural state of the female animal is pregnant or exclusively breastfeeding. How many periods do you have when you're pregnant? Zero. And so this incessant menstruation that we are now having because we're delaying having our children until age 26 on average, or for those of us who had to go through more school or took us a while to find our significant other, 36, 20 plus years of building and sloughing and building and sloughing and blood all over everything <laughs> for no good reason. And just to illustrate, up and down, up and down, <laughs> up and down. And um, same thing with your hormones, because you've got to get the hormones to get it up, and then the hormones as it goes down. So incessant menstruation is a relatively new phenomenon. And there's no need to build and shed and risk blood everywhere and public humiliation. Imagine giving a talk and bleh, um, if you aren't trying to get pregnant. So none of this if you're not trying to do this. So this is me with my little ones. I had to throw in a family photo. Um, health conditions that can be better with hormones. So a lot of people, there's a lot of myths about birth control out there. It makes your acne better. And then arthritis, interestingly enough. Depression, if you're up and down and up and down, be much better to be smooth. Diabetes and seizures, very important to keep your hormones rock solid, stable. But if you're up and down, up and down, that's going to exacerbate your diabetes and your seizure drug um, levels. And then period related, sad uterus. Um, you don't want painful periods, heavy periods, PMS. If you get rid of P, then you don't have the menstrual syndrome. So if you don't have menses, sorry, if you don't have menses, then you don't have that problem. And then anemia. So I like to illustrate for all those without uteri in the room, just imagine that once a month, we take a knife and we go and we let you bleed. And so if you have anemia, you already have low blood, low hemoglobin. We don't want to waste our extra blood. And it's very interesting. I'm an adolescent medicine specialist. In adolescence, women's hemoglobin goes down and men's go up. And then, as we mentioned before, fewer ovarian, endometrial, and interestingly enough, colorectal cancer. So a lot of women experience, I call it sympathetic diarrhea during your period because your uterus is sad and then your colon around your uterus is also sad. And so um, that can increase turnover in that system, thereby increasing your risk of cancer. Other uh, obvious infectious disease. If you've got blood everywhere, it's more likely you're going to spread HIV or hepatitis B or C. And then if you're developmentally delayed, imagine if you have the mind of a five-year-old and all of a sudden blood's coming out of you. You're like, ah, am I dying or do I smear this around and paint some beautiful landscape with it? And then military personnel. So if I'm trying to run away and there's a pack of dogs coming after me, but I'm leaving a trail of blood, it's going to be a lot easier to find me. Quality of life. So imagine me, Sophia Yen, at MIT pre-med in the middle of my biochem final. Ah! So do I run to the bathroom or do I finish my final? Correct answer, pre-meds, finish the final. <laughs> and as I look to my left and as I look to my right, two dudes. And I'm like, ah! And uh, I finished my final, and then I ran to the bathroom, and I still crushed it. But um, <laughs> I'm here today. And so I have two daughters, and I want them to go crush the world. I don't want them to be in the middle of an exam and all of a sudden, you know. And so just for you all out there, two years after a young woman or a young person with a uterus gets her period, then you can turn off the periods right now. Future, maybe we'll have better technology, but if we throw the estrogen on too early, then you'll lose some height. And I have two short little Asian daughters, and I want them to get as much height as possible. So two years after you get your period, we can turn that sucker off. 
and the number one cause of missed school and work, not in some third world country, yes, in third world country, but also the United States is your period painful, heavy periods. And when I was at uh, Children's Oakland, but also just in clinic in general, women would miss two days out of every month of school. And you're like, oh, two days, not so much. That's 10% of her education. So imagine your education is a foundation, a brick wall, and I'm punching 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% here. And then we put pressure on this system it's going to collapse. So I don't want anybody with a uterus missing out 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. If you know anyone missing work or school, and I've actually given this talk to CEOs, and like three of them will come up to me afterwards out of a room of 30 and be like, oh, my periods are horrible, and I blah. I was like, don't you have insurance? Shouldn't you go see your doctor? So if you are missing school or work, please see your doctor. And then just um, over-the-counter remedy you can use until then, 600 milligrams of ibuprofen with food. If you don't take it with food, you're going to come back to me with an ulcer for up to three times a day for five days. You don't have to take it for the five days. If it works in the first two or three days, don't do more than you have to. And take it at the beginning, before the pain in the blood grows. You want to cut it down before it grows. It will decrease the blood by 30%. So that's my clinical pearl to you all today. And then academic competitiveness. We as physicians, we check for anemia, but we don't check for iron deficiency until you get anemia. But there was a research study where they checked everybody for iron deficiency and not anemia, and they showed with the same IQ, those with iron deficiency had lower math scores. When you put back the iron, their math scores improved. So you can imagine if women are being bloodlet one week out of four, we're losing blood, we're losing hemoglobin, we're losing the extra oxygen to do those fast permutations that you may need to do in math class. And then, as I mentioned before, if you're worried about getting hit with a period, you're not going to be able to concentrate as well, but you can still crush it. And then environmental. Women use 10,000 to 13,000 tampons and pads in their lifetime. And right now, there is a movement for menstrual equity or period poverty, and I absolutely support it. But if we cut down the number of periods, there would be far less need for it. So as an aside, there's a group here at uh, Berkeley, that is going to be working on a petition that wherever there is toilet paper, there should be tampons and maxi pads, because it's about dignity, right? So the way to do this, turn off your period, you can use the birth control ring, patch pill, those are all the same medication, and that has a much greater efficacy. If you go on any of those methods, we can predict your period every four weeks, or we can turn it off. And then you can also use the progestin-only one, the IUD with hormone, the implant, or the shot. Though these have a variable rate of efficacy, 30% for the IUDs, but then 70% will get lighter periods, so good. And then for the shot, 70% will lose their periods after three shots. So it's hard for me as a physician and healthcare providers to get it through to your head, but those with uteruses, if you aren't on any medications, you better have a period every month in the United States. Because if you don't, I got to look for eating disorder, uh, athlete, eating not enough for the amount of exercise that they're doing, thyroid tumor in your head or something like that. But if you want to turn off your periods, we now have the technology to turn that off, and it has so many benefits. So let's make hashtag periods optional, and your uterus is much cuter and happier without periods. <laughs>